What's up everyone? We're back today with another project and today it's going to be on the Old Blue Excursion. It is about 103 out right now and the AC in this thing works. It just hasn't been keeping up so I'm going to give the AC system some love. First off what I'm going to do is replace the AC condenser which is this. Now the AC condenser is essentially the same the same thing you see on the side of your house. Now that's the condensing unit and it has the condenser coil and the compressor built inside of it. But on these, this 7.3 excursion, the compressor is right here and the condenser is here. And what the condenser's job is, is to remove the heat from the refrigerant. Well, this one is an O2, so it's pretty old and it has over 300,000 miles on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you why I'm changing it. Now, um, <clears throat> I went ahead and pulled this off. This is the piece that goes right here, covers it up. Actually, it's a, as a lot of us who work on the Super Duties know, it's probably your tool shelf just as well as it is mine. So I um, went ahead and pulled all the uh, little pins out and got this piece off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the grill and show you exactly why I'm changing this and what I have to do. The grill's been taken off and the way you do that is, at least on one of these, is you have the four screw holes and then there's these tabs on the bottom. And when they're snapped in, what you do is you take your flathead, you press up on the end of it and you pull. And that'll allow the bottom of the grill to rock out. You can see that this is where they mount. One, two, three, four. Well, <clears throat> here's why I'm changing that thing. Because as you can see, a lot of these fins, this thing's dirty one and a lot of the fins are smashed. Now, there's tools called fin combs you can use to straighten these out but this one's pretty far gone. I mean, it's full of rocks and bugs and all sorts of stuff. And not only will this have an effect on the air conditioner not working, it'll have an effect on how hot the engine runs. So, I mean, you can see that these, I mean, there's really no good way to straighten them. Same with all the ones down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. And here's the replacement one. You can see it's nice. None of them are plugged. So it should work a lot better. What the problem I was having is at low RPMs, if I was sitting idling or like in a drive-through, it wouldn't work as well, which, you know, is quite common on AC systems because you're not getting as much air moving over the front of this to pull the heat out of the refrigerant. But even when I'd start driving, it wasn't as cool as it should have been. And when I hooked my gauges up to it, the head, what's called the head pressure, which is the high side of the compressor was higher than it should have been. And when the head pressure is high, that indicates either an overcharge or couple other factors but one of the main ones is your condenser being plugged so I figured it's time it's uh yeah it's gonna be pretty hot for the next few days so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get it changed out now there's these little plastic rivets that hold this this uh, piece of uh, rubber to the body and it's held to the condenser on the other side and what this does is it kind of funnels all the air through the condenser instead of letting it go around so went ahead and pulled these out now there's some push rivets on the lower part that are kind of harder to get to but at some point you know a lot of people just cut it kind of like i did and that way you can get it out this will come out with the this will probably stay with the body and then when we push it back down i can line it back up so i'm gonna get my uh, tools and we'll get started i'm gonna start by unbolting the mounts Now these should be the only two. I'm probably gonna have to pull the hood latch off. And when you do that, you gotta make sure it stays aligned or else your hood will uh, be funky. So I'm gonna have to go get a Sharpie for that one. So we got these guys out. I'm gonna separate them so don't get them mixed up. And now perhaps I should have added before you do any work on your AC system, you have to make sure it's empty now. You can use a recovery machine like I have, or you can take it to a shop and they can empty it, but there's a little left in there. It'll, it'll just build back up from uh, just being hot in the refrigerant expanding, so let it make sure it's at zero before you uh, pull anything off real, s yeah, you're gonna make a big mess and could very easily harm yourself or, hurt your eyes or something. 
So let's see what size this is. It's probably going to be a 13. It sure is. the top one. You can tell this thing was fairly well taken care of because a lot of the vehicles don't have these uh, rubber slash felt dividers anymore. Guys just cut them out. So I'm going to go ahead and try to preserve this one as much as I can. Okay, this is the top and this is the bottom. So got those off. Don't really think you can get them mixed up, but I'm pretty sure someone out there found a way. So as you can see, it's loose, but I'm gonna have to take the hood latch off to get it out. Now what I'm gonna do is draw a line where the hood latch is. Because if you get it, reinstall it with it off, it can make the hood all cattywampus and it won't want to close. So two eight mil bolts and the hood latch will be out. All right, hood latch. So I'm gonna fold these fabrics back and grab it and lift. Let's see, we still caught? Yep, one second. Okay, so I had to go down and pull the little push rivets on this lower piece of felt on both sides. I thought they were already out, but I was mistaken. So as you can see, significant difference between the two. Now this part where it's clean is this, so it was actually protected, but you can see what a huge different difference it is. So what I'm gonna have to do is flip it over just like that one and I'm going to transfer the felts over now just use I use a pair of dykes and I pull these little fellas out but um you can use different pullers and whatnot but I'm gonna go ahead and do that show you how to do it Just like that. Push it in. Now the holes on these are a little bigger, so I might have to find some bigger ones, but you get the general idea. Yeah, I'm gonna find some bigger ones. These will probably work. Let's see it stuck up about half an inch above that. So it's gonna stick up about half an inch above that, about there. So go ahead and cut these out. Make the hole a little bigger. Shove this fella through. Now you gotta be careful. I don't know if you can be affected by them, but there's a gang of bee stingers stuck in these things. Now I don't, I'm not a beekeeper, so I don't know exactly how it works, but I don't know if you got poked by it and you were allergic to bees, if it could affect you, but it's better not to find out. So I'll put that one there and then Put this one there. Pretty dang close. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the same with the other side. Okay, got it on now. These little studs that screw in here, I think the new one was supposed to come with it, but it didn't. So I went ahead and uh, took the ones off the old one. Now, these EVAPs, or, I'm sorry, the condensers come sealed. 
Now when you unscrew this, it's probably gonna hiss, which is a good thing because that means that it was pressure tested at the factory and still has charge, yep. Just like residential or uh, commercial AC parts, when you get them, they're normally charged with nitrogen. So if you unscrew one of these and it doesn't hiss, I'd be a tad bit suspicious. So you don't keep any of that crap. Because I've never seen a condenser or an evaporator or any AC part short of the condenser that had a, a core charge on it. So it just gets thrown away. We'll go ahead and uh, screw these guys in. It was sunny earlier. It's kind of nice that it's a little overcast. It is getting humid though, so it's a mixed blessing. Okay, now that that's in, we're gonna deal with this because it's easier to do right now. Now we have these two lines and they have O-rings on them. And you gotta change them because you can see the O-rings are kind of squared up and you don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some new ones. So here's my O-ring assortment. Put those guys there and try to find two that match it. There's one that looks like it and Let's see. Hmm. I only have one fat one. Let me go look. Got a different set of O-rings and it looks like they will be in here. Now you can probably use some that are similar, but I mean, these sets of O-rings are like nine bucks. So why risk it? So those are the right ones. So let's go ahead and put them on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit of oil on them too, just to uh, help them slide into place and not pinch. To put that on. Put that on. Put a good dab on these. And it's time for the condenser. Okay. get these rubber fellas to cooperate and that is not where the condenser goes that sides in okay now make sure it's sitting on its little feet and it is. So, go ahead and put the mounts back on. Okay, now time for the lines. Let's get the bottom one first. Now you might have to do a little finagling. Move them around a bit, but actually no, these ones went in pretty easy. The one I did the other day was kind of had to shake them around a little bit.
Now you don't gotta go gorilla tight on them, but make sure they're tight. Okay. Now I'm gonna put this back and try to realign these bottom ones. Like I said, the push rivets are a little different. Old fabric likes to tear, but as long as that's there and the bottom one. Okay. It's not rocket surgery, but it is nice to put stuff back where it came from. Got those. Now we're gonna do the uh, hood latch. Just notice that rubbing. Now let's see. Oh, backwards. Okay, now that that's in, let's get the grill. You can see, just line them up and push. That's in, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this in. Sweet. All right, on to the next part. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is change the orifice tube. Now, the orifice tube on this, this uh, excursion has two AC systems, one in the front, one in the back, but this is the orifice tube for the front. Now what it is, is it's a tiny little tube that filters and regulates the flow of refrigerant going to the evaporator. And the evaporator is the cold portion. That's right here. So this little guy sits in there and the refrigerant goes through here and goes from a liquid to a gas and when it expands it becomes cold it's the same it's basically the same principle as if you hold like a hairspray can or a spray paint can too long and the can gets cold but it's just a recycled system so it just keeps doing that and doing that so this is the point of expansion where it flashes out well well yeah what this one is is it's a variable orifice tube so the standard ones just have a tube and the refrigerant goes through it no matter you know what the pressure only a certain amount can go through so whether you're driving it'll you know or stopped as much will go through it as can well when you stop and you're sitting there idling as most of us know the uh a lot of the time the ac doesn't work as well so what this one's supposed to do is um adjust the refrigerant flow to maintain the same evaporator temperature so that you don't get warm when you're sitting at the drive through or um or you know um idling and the condenser doing the condenser is going to help a lot too so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this guy in. Now, the orifice lives right here, so you have to use one of these little quick disconnect guys. And I already sprayed some PB Blaster on there. And this is like a fuel line tool. So you just have to push it in and hope it comes out. Oh. 
Looks like it is. Yep. So, get that guy off. The orifice tube should be right in there. So I'm gonna get a set of pliers and take it out. Now let's see. All right, well, this is the orifice tube I pulled out. It um, has some metal and some other debris on it. It looks like the compressor might have been on its way out, but the guy who I got this from said it had a new compressor, so that could be newer compressor. That thing doesn't look new, but I mean, this could be left over. So I, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one in, see how it does. If it takes a dump down the road, I'll uh, change the compressor and the accumulator. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this, this new orifice in and um, run it, see how it does. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the dude's word for it. But if it dies, okay, well, I'll have to do it. But yeah, I mean, it's not, not completely plugged up. So, is what it is. Now these things are directional. See, there's an arrow on here. The arrow goes towards the evaporator. The arrow's right there. They look the same. On my white six liter truck, whoever had it before me put it in backwards. And if you can see the screen on here has bigger holes than the screen here. Well, this had plugged up with debris and got pushed so far into the evap that it actually started turning and it got stuck in there. So when I tried to pull it out, it broke and I ended up having to change the evap, which sucked. So yeah, go ahead and uh, make sure you follow the arrows. This one doesn't have arrows on it, but it'll go in that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my little screwdriver, show you what to do next. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull these little O-rings off. Get them all off. And we're gonna replace them. Let's see what we have. Let's see. Looks like a winner. Looks like a winner. And cool. So just, there's, this one doesn't give you a whole lot of room because this is the line going to the rear climate control. So it's making the, this whole mess in here not the most, or not the easiest to uh, maneuver. So, there's that one. That one, and this one. Nope, same thing. Go ahead and uh, oil it up a little bit. So they go in. And let's see. Yep, there it went, it locked. And put this clamp back on for good measure. And we are ready to pump the system down. Okay, now what this is, is a vacuum pump. And what it does is it puts the entire AC system under a vacuum. Now, it's really important to do this. You can, if you don't have a vacuum pump or a set of gauges, you can rent a vacuum pump from O'Reilly or some of the other parts stores. But what this does is it puts the entire system under a vacuum and it gets moisture out, it gets contaminants out and it gets the air out because if the system only holds a, a certain amount of refrigerant, but the entire system's full of air, that air takes place of refrigerant and so you don't get the proper charge. But the biggest function of the, va the most important function of the vacuum pump is to remove moisture. And it's really important because in an AC system, 
there's parts of the system that can run below freezing, like right here where the uh, refrigerant gets gets uh, where it expands out and you know flashes to become cool. You can get you know below freezing there and anywhere in the system where you, it's freezing. If you have moisture, you'll get ice, and the ice can walk through the system and plug your stuff up. So it's super super important to get the moisture out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how the vacuum pump works and what it'll actually do. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, right now we're gonna talk about <laughs> vacuum pumps. Now, the reason, I, like I was saying, the reason these things are so useful in air conditioning is their ability to remove moisture. Now, moisture and it's, you know, you have water in the system, how are you gonna get it out? I mean, it's not like this thing, you know, sucking a little bit of air is really gonna get it out, <clears throat> but it, when you put it under a vacuum, it will flash the water to steam and it literally boils it off. When most people think about boiling, they think heat. Well, this will actually turn the water that's in here into steam. And once it's in, once it turns to steam, it can be pumped out through the vacuum pump and expelled. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of water going through this pump will kind of dilute the oil and make it all milky, so just like it would in a... Uh, when you have a blown head gasket or something. So I'm gonna show you like, this is straight, just normal drinking water. Like I know there's crap floating in it, but I can take a sip. So I'm gonna pour this in here and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook the vacuum pump up to it. And set the lid on. And you can see the gauge is, let me zero the gauge. It, uh, it's kind of freaking out because I'm at altitude now. If this is the, the vacuum pump uses the same principle as that you'll see if you say live at sea level and then you go camping up in you know in the mountains at altitude and you notice the water boils quicker. Same thing, except this is like at a whole nother level. If you run the vacuum pump long enough and get a perfect vacuum, it's literally how it's like in space, perfect vacuum. So right now we're sitting at zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'll show you what it does. Now look at that. See? Look at that's that's a rolling boil. And it's not hot. See, that's what it's doing. And it's it's taking it and it's sucking it all and converting it to steam and pulling it out. This is exactly what it will do inside your AC system. Look at that's a rolling boil and it's cold. I'm boiling water right now at room temperature. I mean, the, when most people think of boiling, they think of heat, you know, to cook food or whatnot, but the vacuum pump will legitimately boil water off at room temperature. So if all this air was in, or if all this water was in your system right now, it would be flashing off and I'd be sucking it out. So this is why a vacuum pump so important. Now I could put a marshmallow in here and it'll get huge, or, you know, you can get these little vacuum chambers and do all sorts of cool stuff with them. But I wanted to show you guys like, this is what, this is why you use a vacuum pump on a system. So it'll get the moisture, the air, the, you know, any contaminants, gases, whatever out, but this is what it's doing. So I, uh, yeah, I wanted to show you why the vacuum pump's so important. Like, like I said, this is a rolling boil, but it is cold to the touch. So this is, uh, this is why I'm gonna, <clears throat> anytime I do AC work, I always use the vacuum and that's why you'll see me doing it when I, uh, when I finish this excursion up. Okay, now, now that you've seen what the vacuum pump can do and how it can boil off water. It's really, really cool that the vacuum pump can put it in such a perfect vacuum that it can simulate, you know, miles and miles in altitude where the water will flash to steam and get sucked out. It's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, they do this on big commercial systems, house systems, industrial systems, pretty much any refrigeration system gets put under a vacuum when it's after it's done being serviced or installed. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this one under a vacuum. So Going to open the low side port and the high side port, turn my vacuum pump on, and open these. Now, you don't want to go too, too quick. You'll hear the vacuum pump tone change. You don't want to go too quick because on an automotive system, they're so small that you can actually turn the, uh, you can turn the water to ice in the system by sucking it down too quick. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy pump down. I'm gonna basically run it, run it, run it until um, the vacuum pump gets quiet. And then um, I'm gonna progressively open these up as they go. Cause you can hear it kind of change in tone. So you just slowly open. See right there and then it, some point it'll come to where it's completely quiet and you'll just hear, you'll barely hear it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump it down and kind of clean up my mess and then um, I'll get back with you. Okay, now as you can hear, the vacuum pump is quiet. So I went ahead and disconnected the high side and left the low side on there. So I go ahead and shut it off and close this off. Okay. And I can go ahead and shut the vacuum pump off. Now, when after you vacuum a certain amount of these, you want to change the oil because the oil will get milky and stuff just from having moisture in it. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this, but I'm not going to charge it off a 30, uh, 25 or 30 pound jug because most people don't have access to that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the standard method that most people can get their hands on, which is the cans. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and charge it using the cans. Now you can get these at any auto store. Now this one calls for 68 ounces and 68 divided by 12, which is 12 ounces per can is 5.6. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot basically five and a half of these in. So you lock it onto the low side right here and start shooting it in. Now it's after about one, I'm gonna have to start the uh, start the engine so it'll suck the rest in because without the compressor on, it's not gonna create a pressure differential to suck it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot the rest of this can in and start the engine. You go in there, you put the vents to face and you put it on max AC. And you can see the compressor cycling right now because there's not enough refrigerant in the system. So. I'm just gonna keep filling it. It's the same thing, just go all through the cans and then on the last one, stop halfway. This is a big system, so it's gonna need a lot. Well, there you have it, guys. I uh, finished charging it, pulled the charging gun off the low side port that's on top of the accumulator and screwed the cap on and closed the hood. And it is doing 59.7 and it's 88 outside and that's it idle the more air you get across that condenser the colder the air is the colder the air coming out is going to get so it feels great in here can't wait to see how it does on the highway but that's pretty much it guys i mean that variable orifice tube made a huge difference because i used to swelter when i'd go in the drive throughs but i don't think i'm going to anymore so if you have any AC related questions or whatnot, let me know. Um, at some point, I'm probably gonna replace the compressor and, and accumulator on this thing. And I'll uh, go ahead and document that when I do it. But a huge upgrade. I'm really happy with the variable orifice. Okay, it made a huge difference. I can already tell it's gonna be better. So I'm going to um, take it to work tomorrow and I usually go to lunch in the drive-through. So I'll let you know how it works. Hey guys, wanted to give you a quick update. Like I told you I would on the way to work. And it's, um, it's 98 right now, but I'm on the highway going about 72. And I don't know if you can read that or not, but I'm getting 46 degree air coming out. So this thing's kicking butt and taking names. I'll uh, fill you in when I uh, get to the drive-thru. And I just went through the drive-thru. I didn't want to do the video in the drive-thru because I didn't want to block traffic, but this is what I got. I got 71.2 and that's just sitting there. That's sitting there in the drive-thru. I'd been there for about 10 minutes. Now the interior of the truck is hot because it's been, you know, sitting at my work since six this morning and it's warmed up progressively. But um, that's pretty good. I'm really happy with 71.2. Now <coughs> I know that the new condenser is going to help immensely too to remove the heat from the system. But I mean, gotta give it to the variable orifice tube because I took another vehicle to work 
yesterday that had the standard orifice tube and the condenser is in good shape the rest of the system's in good shape and i was getting around 78 79 at the same drive through so i mean it kind of speaks for itself and granted that was a f350 and it only had one um it only has one you know climate zone instead of having uh, two evaporators and two ac systems in the same truck but i measured it coming out the front just like i measured it coming out the front here so um you know, I'm thinking the 350 might need a fan clutch now keep in mind this is the original fan clutch in the 7.3 as far as I know it looks original as far as I know it had the Ford numbers on it when I checked so um, I'm probably going to change it anyway just for good measure because I don't want to be you know caught with my pants down and have it take a dump but I'm really happy I mean the variable tubes seem to work I mean I was driving down the road you know between uh between my work and the drive through and I was getting 55 54 coming out and um yeah, I mean, can't argue with that. I mean, that's that's excess. It's almost, it's in the realm of 40 degrees. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. But I told you guys I'd make a video in the afternoon on my lunch, so I'm doing that. But um, if you like the channel, subscribe. Leave me comments if you'd like. I really appreciate the support. I'm trying to make as many of these videos as I can to, um, you know, help people who are uh, trying to upgrade and repair their vehicles. And um, I am going to have other vehicles coming up. I've just... Um, the excursion's my daily driver, so I've been trying to make it as reliable and comfortable as possible, but I have a whole lot more exciting stuff coming, and it'll be, uh, I want to focus more on the upgrade side instead of the repair side as well, so there's going to be a whole lot of other content coming, so appreciate the support, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Later.